Hi, this is Keith Townsend from VirtualizedGeek.com. We're continuing our lab on installing a VMware vSphere environment within VMware Workstation. To this point, we've installed our Windows Server, our ESXi host, and now we're moving on to installing the VCSA or vCenter server appliance within VMware Workstation. As a reminder, this is a lab inspired by Jonathan Frapier's. We're going to diverge from his lab a little bit. Instead of installing our VCSA inside of a ESXi host, we're going to go ahead and import it within our VMware workstation. This gives us a little bit more flexibility. One, if you're not using Windows, or two, if you don't want to use the Sharp client, this gives us more flexibility and options. So let's get started. So importing the OVA into VMware Workstation is a little bit non-intuitive. There's no menu option to actually import a OVA. We have to navigate to where our OVA file is in our hard drive and double click on the OVA. So we'll go ahead and Port that and choose the proper directory. And depending on the speed of your system, this may take up to 10 minutes. So after the install is complete, we'll have a new server in our inventory and we'll go ahead and move it into our labs folder. It's now the vCenter server appliance. And one thing we want to investigate changing is the memory settings on our vCenter server. By default, the vCenter server has 8 gig of RAM. We most definitely want to bring that down to about 4 gig, I think is the sweet spot for most configurations. In practice, the vCenter server won't use that much. We'll go ahead and leave it at 8 gig for our install, but we'll ratchet that back down to 4 gig after we're complete with the install. Second thing that we want to make sure we do is our networking. Uh, we will use the bridge network for, again, we want to take advantage of the ability to use multiple physical hosts if we want to. So we're going to leave the network on our bridged VMware workstation network. So let's go ahead and power up our vCenter server. Once our vCenter server is completely powered up, we want to navigate to the IP address of the vCenter server. And we want to make sure we choose port, the default port 5480. If we're using Chrome or any other browser, it's going to tell us that we're nav navigating to a non-secure site. We know this. We haven't issued certificates in our lab, so we're going to go ahead and say that that's fine because, of course, we know what we're doing from a security perspective in this lab. We're going to log in with the default credentials, which is root, and the password is VMware. We're going to accept our license agreement, and we're going to select defaults from this point forward because we'll come back to configure our vCenter server appliance. Once the vCenter services have started, we can navigate to the vCenter server's default IP address and go ahead and validate that the installation has been successful. You see that we're getting the default splash page for the VMware vSphere server. At this point, if you're running a Windows machine, we can install the C Sharp client by downloading it directly from this link. That's if you want to run the C-sharp client and you have a Windows workstation. Or we can go ahead and log in to the vSphere web client just to validate that the installation was successful. Again, the default username is root. And there you have it. We've successfully installed the VMware vCSA server within VMware Workstation.